Hello world and hello amazing Philippines. Welcome to our online class. For today's lecture video, we're going to have the critical literacy. And uh, before we start, I invite all to of course, subscribe, click like, and uh, share. And then of course you can leave a message okay, about uh, this video in the comment section. This is again Sir A, wishing you, of course, an enjoyable learning journey for today. For our learning outcomes, we have, of course, the following. Number a, number one, rather, is defined, uh, of course, uh, critical literacy and related terms. We have described the background of critical literacy theory, then summarize, of course, the understanding and characterize the role of critical literacy and, of course, applied principles of critical literacy in designing lessons and classroom activities. Let's first, of course, have this okay, idea. Uh, that, of course, thinking critically is, of course, the new literacy of today. And I have here, of course, and probably an activity for you to think, okay? Uh, what texts have you been exposed to in okay, the 20, last 24 hours? And uh, the next question is that, what impact have those texts had on you? So probably now we receive a lot of messages or text messages, okay, or whatever, Thing that we can have from our parents, our probably uh, loved ones, we have also from relatives and even friends. Okay, the question is, what impact have those texts had on you? Probably it has, of course, a great impact for all of us, depending on, okay, who probably messages you and uh, so on. So that's it. Okay, let's have uh, the quotation that we can have here, students today experience a constant stream of ideas and information, okay, online, in print, and through, of course, electronic games and mass media. As they move into the junior grades, of course, they encounter an ever-widening range of texts. They need, of course, skills to determine where to direct their attention and how to interpret messages and use the, them appropriately. So this is based on Ontario Ministry of Education. Okay, so this is very true. And uh, of course, if we're going to notice education today and probably uh, the learning styles, even uh, the teaching styles are different compared to before. Okay. And uh, let's first, of course, define what is, of course, critical literacy. It is an instructional approach that had book advocates the adoption of critical perspectives towards text. So the focus, of course, with the critical literacy is being critical on the text. Okay, and Alan Luke refers to, uh, refers to us, of course, a new phase basic for navigating the text and media saturated world. Okay, and of course, critical literacy is a central thinking skills that involves the questioning and examination of ideas and requires one to synthesize, analyze, interpret, evaluate, and respond to the text read or listen to. So take note of, of course, this definition, okay, that uh, it is a thinking skill, okay, and it involves, of course, questioning and examination of ideas. The question is, do we question text or even examine ideas? Okay, do we synthesize? Do we analyze, okay, or interpret, evaluate, and respond to the text, read, or listen to? So if you answered yes, very good. Okay, let's have uh, the continuation. And it says that critical literacy encourages pupils or students to investigate, question, and the challenge relationships between language and social practices that advantage particular groups over others. Okay, I like, uh, of course, the... Uh, the words here that uh, are being highlighted, like investigate, question, challenge relationships, or uh, between, of course, the language and the social practice that we have. So that's with, of course, critical literacy. If you're going to not notice, it's very nice to have this critical literacy. Okay. 
probably if in a higher sense you would ask what about okay uh the it talks about of course the text okay mind you everybody again one must say of course text it focus in uh the following not just probably a mere text but we can have also number one a picture okay you can have also a graphic okay you can have also um paragraph which is probably a text not a sentence and so on so it comes uh, probably in many forms when we say of course a text it does not focus more on the words okay so we have of course the question of what is critical literacy so when we are of course critical we talk about um, the author purpose or probably the author intention what's the intention of the author what about motivation the viewpoint the point of view the bias not the author's bias the analysis of author's credibility even validity of author's writing the adequacy of author's writing is it adequate okay other than of course the one that you are reading or probably seeing can can you have still other okay um, writing of the author what about the relevance of the author's writing is it really bound to you or to of course the readers okay and tools are of craft used by author to affect thinking okay and of course making overall judgment and inference about author's work so these probably are critical among okay of course the reader of the text and so on so that's it okay we have, of course, the concept about text. So if you notice there, okay, we have, of course, the following. So all texts are, of course, constructions. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. So what is written is, of course, the product of many decisions and determining factors. Of course, much of our view of reality is based on messages that have been, of course, constructed in this way. So with, of course, author's attitude, we consider, of course, the attitude of the author, his, of course, interpretations and conclusions, okay, which is already built into the text. So we have three things there. It's the author's attitudes, even the interpretation, and, of course, conclusions, which is already built in, okay, into the text. So again, all texts are constructions. The second is that uh, all texts contain belief and value messages. Do you agree also? about uh, all texts contain belief and uh, value messages. So whether it is oral, print, and visual media, texts contain messages which reflect, of course, the biases and opinions of their authors or creators, whether intentionally manipulative or not. Again, whether intentionally manipulative or not, which means that no text can be neutral or value-free. Again, no text can be neutral or value-free, okay? And uh, the next is that, okay, all or each person rather interprets messages differently. You delete the all there. Each person interprets messages differently. So it talks about why, why there is, of course, different uh, interpretation. Okay, but because of these, uh, probably the answer is because of these demographic factors, such as, of course, the age, the culture, no? gender, and even socioeconomic status or status, as well as, of course, prior experience. So we have different uh, experiences and knowledge that plays a role on how, of course, we interpret message. So again, it depends upon, of course, uh, with the factors that uh, can we have, such as the age, the culture, the gender, and socioeconomic status, as well as, of course, uh, prior experience and knowledge. So it play a role in how, of course, we interpret a message. So that's it. And the next is that um, text serves different interests. So most, of course, media uh, messages are created for profit and or to persuade. So, but all of texts are produced intentionally for a purpose. Again, most media messages are created for profit or to persuade. Okay. But all texts are produced intentionally and uh, for a purpose. So it's intentional. And of course, there is really the purpose. Okay. What's the purpose? Probably to have profit and or persuade people. Take a look at, of course, a billboard or any advertisement. Okay, so it's intentional in nature and it has a purpose. 
And these interests can be in three ways. The first is commercial, ideological, or political. So the, the acronym for this is SIP. Okay, comm first commercial, second ideological, or political. And um, the next is that uh, its medium develops its own language in order to position readers or viewers in certain ways. So whether it be program, website, or novel, it's of course medium creates meaning differently and each has distinctive techniques, conventions, and aesthetics. Okay, again, um, its medium of course creates meaning differently and each has distinctive techniques, meaning um, unique, okay, techniques, even conventions, and aesthetics. So when you say aesthetics class, it's beauty, okay. Then we have, of course, this four, uh, Frank Serratini's four roles of the visual learner, or the four roles of the visual learner, according to Dr. Frank Serafini. Okay, the first one is, of course, um, the first role is interpreter. So here, the learner is being asked, what is the producer or of this image or trying or text trying communicate to me or to of course the learner and uh, of course based on uh, the experience or my experience what connections can i make to the image or text to better understand the message and how will i interpret the message that's interpreter the other the second is um role rather is navigator. So you ask, of course, what elements do I see in this image? Okay, or text, okay, probably line, shape, pattern, texture, and color. So it talks about, of course, navigator. Then we have, of course, designer. Number three role is being a designer. So here, the question is that, how can I use the, the structures or visual grammar, such as composition, perspective, and visual symbols to communicate a message or idea? And lastly, of course, interrogator. So it's the, the former name of this, or pre, this is actually previously known as the critical analyst. So here you answer what social or political or historical issues might be presented or interpreted through this image text. So what is, of course, the big idea presented in this image or text? Again, we have, of course, the four roles of the visual learner. The first is interpreter. Okay, then we have, of course, navigator. Number three or the third is designer. And number four is interrogator. In acronym, we have, of course, in the, in the I and DI. Okay, I stands for interpreter and is for navigator. D is designer. And of course, the uh, another I is interrogator. So that's it. Okay. Let's continue with, of course, our lesson. So there is a question here. Why is critical literacy important? Think of, of course, an answer, okay? And um, that can probably could suit with, of course, uh, this question. Okay, so critical, of course, literacy encourages readers to actively analyze texts. That's very nice. And offers, of course, strategies for what proponents describe as uncovering underlying messages. So of course, whether we like it or not, or probably, yeah, uh, even if you deny, there is really hidden message, okay, with the, the text, supposing, okay, if you cannot see it, no, right away, there is uncovering underlying message, okay, if of course you have uh, the text, okay, and it's probably, it, it really pertains with, of course, the critical literacy. Okay, and we have, of course, the characteristics of critical literacy. It is actually, number one, looking closely at texts of all kinds. Then, of course, looking for big ideas. The third is questioning text to analyze text. Then we have, of course, examining our own attitudes, beliefs, and values. Do you examine your own beliefs, tech, uh, your values also, and even your attitudes? Okay, then we have also identifying solutions or missing voices or alternative points of view. Supposing it's not your point of view, okay, whose point of view is there? Okay, or supposing you disagree probably with the point of view of the author, okay, or the presenter. 
Then we have, of course, realizing that there is more than one version of the text available. Like, for example, if you're going to notice in the internet, like, like for example, you Google something. So there's a lot of or different ways on how the text is being presented. Okay, then we have, of course, thinking about how the text impacts our lives, okay, how it impacts you. Then creating text for various audiences and purpose. Mind you, we have, of course, different audience. We have uh, different purpose or purposes or audiences, okay, with, with, with our, of course, text. Let's have these, no, questioning the text. And we have actually five. Oh, now, there are several models of questioning the text. Okay, we have, of course, the five, as we've mentioned, Ws. We have, of course, the three levels of questions. We have, of course, the key chart. Okay, and of course, we have the Bloom's taxonomy. So in all, we have, of course, four. Okay, several models of questioning the text. Let's discuss one by one. Okay, what can you see, of course, in the picture? Yeah, you can see me there. Okay, together with, of course, my students. And these okay, uh, are our honor students in the College of Education during the graduation, actually. Okay. Um, these are some of our honor students okay, in the College of Education or teacher education program. There are a lot, but however, of course, in this group, okay, this is a combination of math, English, and of course, uh, special education. So let's continue with, of course, our lesson, which is, of course, uh, the five W's or <clears throat> still with, of course, the critical literacy. So here, of course, with the five W's, you will ask who is in the photograph. So it's, what's the answer there? So probably, of course, you can see students and, of course, Dr. Ambos. Then we have uh, what is happening in the photograph. So probably it's because this is a graduation, right? Okay, then uh, this is taken before, of course, the <clears throat> entrance of the graduates. And of course, where is the photograph showing? Okay, this is uh, taken in front of our um, nursing building, and it's probably the front end of our field. And we have, of course, when was the photograph taken? Okay, it's during that graduation. And lastly, why did someone take the photograph? What's the purpose? Probably this is for uh, uh, this is again, this is of course for uh, memories, no, to cherish, no, memory. Okay, a good memory, probably, or or we can have, of course, mm. something to keep. Okay. That's it. Again, uh, we have the who, what, uh, where, when, and of course, why. So the why is, of course, the reason. When is time. Where is probably the location or the place. What is happening. So probably the... Uh, the event itself. And who is, of course, when, when we say who, okay, it talks about, of course, the people present there. Okay, so that's it. Okay, uh, in the why again, why did someone take the photograph? Probably for remembrance purpose. Okay, that's it. Let's have uh, the next, which is of course the three levels of questions. So here you can see, of course, this picture. And um, kindly take a look with the picture. What can you see? Okay, so you can have, of course, a finger and um, yeah, a hand, uh, which probably, of course, uh, uh, you can see, of course, the finger no? and uh, uh, an ant. And there is a text there, the anti-bully. So this summer, it's crunch time. So that's it. So going back to the three levels of questioning, we are having, of course, as number one uh, is the literal or perceptual noticing. Okay, or the, these are the three other terms no? related to, okay, with number one, literal, perceptual, and of course, noticing. So... You can have probably, what do you see or hear? You can then inferential, interpretative, interpretative or interpretive rather. Okay, so what could it mean? So if supposing you can have this picture, what could it mean? So we need to probably stop anti-bullying. Okay, of course, um, 
or we need to stop rather bullying. Then we have evaluative or ideological, and the other one is implication. So question is, what are the intentions of this text? Okay, of course, to answer that, to, for us to be aware, okay, that there is bullying around, then how would the message change if some element were different? So probably if um, you cannot see ant there, it's a different thing. Okay, so again, the three levels of questionings are number one, the literal, perceptual, noticings. Then we have, of course, inferential or interpretive, evaluative, which is also known as ideological and implications. Okay, let's have looking at, uh, looking closely at the text. So supposing this is the picture that you can see there is um, okay, a person, okay, which is probably in hurry and of course a clock. So what do you see or hear? Okay, of course you see something, okay? A person who is in hurry and of course the clock. Okay, what could it mean? Probably we need to, of course, manage our time. It means uh, we need to, of course, uh, balance everything. Okay, it also, we need to also have our priority in life, okay? And uh, of course, whether we like it or not, there are, of course, uh, things that um, we need to prioritize. Okay, then what could it mean? What could be the, the author be trying to tell us or what idea might be presented? Okay, so that's the answer. Okay, well, then we have, of course, how would the text be different if an element were changed? What if? Okay, or how would the message or the tone of the text be different if we change something? So supposing if we can, uh, we can see, of course, a person there or a man, we just standing and probably papogi points. Okay, it means different thing. But uh, because you can see a picture, okay, of a person or a man which is very in hurry. Okay, so it talks, of course, that we need. Uh, it talks, or it means that we need to, of course, to double time and probably have time management. Okay, let's have the textual analysis. What's with this? So when we say textual analysis, it can be, of course, guided by asking the learners to make their way systematically through a list of questions such as the following. Okay, the first is what is in the subject or topic in this text? Okay, why might the author have written it? Or who is it? Is it written for? Or how do you know? So that's it. And what values does the author assume the reader holds? And how do you know? So this is with, of course, textual analysis. So you can, of course, ask questions, okay, systematically. Mm -hmm. Okay, through, of course, uh, the one that you have seen with the text or with the picture. Next, we have uh, the textual analysis also. Okay, with, of course, the following question. What knowledge does the reader need to bring to the text in order to understand it? Okay, who would feel left out in this text and why? Okay, or who would feel that the claims made in this text or in the text clash with their own values, beliefs, or experiences? Or how is the reader positioned, okay, in relation to the author? For example, a friend as an opponent, no? Okay, uh, as someone who needs to be persuaded as invisible, Okay, as awesome who agrees with, of course, the author's view. So these are, of course, uh, uh, in relation to how is the reader positioned in, the, in relation to the author. So you can, of course, be a friend. Uh, you can be an opponent, uh, someone who needs to be persuaded as invisible or as someone who agrees with, of course, the author's view. So that's with, of course, textual analysis. Okay, let's have um, another approach that we can have is the cards. Okay, it is actually used, it is using, of course, a checklist, okay, uh, with, of course, the use of the cards. Cards is an acronym with uh, that, that probably corresponds to credibility, accuracy, reasonableness, reasonableness, support, and support, which is letter S. So which was actually originally developed for use in evaluating websites by Alata and Ignacio 2019. So that's it. Let's have letter C, okay, which is of course stands for credibility. When we say credibility, evidence, authenticity, and reliability is very important. So tests that help the reader judge the, the credibility of the text include examining, of course, the author's credentials and the quality of content. So take note of that. Is the author credible? 
Okay, what about, of course, the quality of his content? So we need to ask, that's letter C, credibility. The next is letter A. It talks about, of course, accuracy. So information needs to be, of course, up-to-date, factual, detailed, exact, and, of course, comprehensive. So these okay, things to bear in mind when judging accuracy includes, of course, timeliness and comprehensiveness or comprehensiveness. So that's, of course, with letter A, accuracy. Okay, let's have, of course, letter R. It stands for reasonableness. So here it involves examining the information for fairness, okay, objectivity, and, of course, moderateness. So fairness requires, of course, the writer to offer a balanced argument okay, and to consider claims made by people with opposing view. So we need, to, of course, to be fair. Okay, so fairness is necessary. And, of course, letter S is support. So for, of course, the writer's argument from other source strengthens their credibility. So it can take, of course, various forms such as writing bibliography and, of course, references and collaboration. So it's really, of course, a must for us, no? supposing you are the author or probably the, the owner of the text or like, uh, for example, even pictures or graphics, okay? That we need to have, of course, the sources, okay? such as uh, we need to write, of course, bibliography and even reference if we, of course, uh, use some works of some authors. Again, okay, cars means, of course, uh, we have credibility. A is accuracy. Then we have, of course, uh, R is reasonable, reasonableness. And, of course, S is support. Okay, again, we need to have cars. Okay, shalan ana. Then we have, of course, the problem posing model. So when we say, of course, problem posing, it is a critical literacy strategy that can be, of course, used with a variety of texts. And after exposure to the text, we engage in critical literacy using, of course, the questions below. So number one is who is, of course, in the text or picture situation? Okay, who is missing? So you need to ask that. Okay, then we need to have whose voice is or are, okay, represented. Mm, whose voice are marginalized or discounted. Okay, then we have, of course, what are the intentions of the author or creator of the text? What does the author want us to think or feel? And what would an art alternative text say or suggest? Okay, and also how can we use this information to promote action or equity? Okay, so that's it. Then we have, of course, the juxtaposing. So when we say juxtaposing, it is a strategy where two texts on a similar topic are compared. Point of view and, of course, persuasive tactics can be determined. Like, for example, there is editorial. Okay, so there is, of course, uh, um, the point of view, no? With, of course, the different um, ways on how to, pro to have this editorial. So two texts, no? Okay, or two probably... Uh, creations can uh, be done with editorials, okay, and uh, probably you can compare that. Then probably how about pictures, no? Supposing there is one subject, okay, and then you have, of course, different uh, way on how to <clears throat> capture the picture. And we have also websites, no? Different ways on how to present um, a topic through websites. What about adver advertisements, okay? We have, of course, the um, to compare different uh, the two advertisements okay then we have of course informational text and anything that we can have okay again that is juxtaposing then we have of course uh, switching so sw switching is an effective strategy for getting of course students to consider the impact of alternative perspectives and to identify present and of course missing voice okay so we need to shift now supposing we talk about gender so male Okay, the voice of a male is different from, of course, the voice of the female. It's not probably through singing, but uh, probably even the, the, the mind, no? Okay, it's different. Okay, then we have, of course, body style. Supposing it's different perspective. For a sexy, okay, it's different from, of course, uh, the one supposing that you are, okay, uh, medyo malaki yung size. And then we have, of course, uh, the theme. Okay, so we talk about different themes. No? Supposing we change the theme for an event. Okay, so it's another probably. Okay, we switch. Okay, then clothing, for example. So for those who are chubby, of course, uh, clothing. Okay, 
uh, is uh, probably hard compared to those who are slim. So if you wanted to buy clothes, nah, you, you can switch. Okay, also. And uh, the way we probably dress, no, there is a switching there. Then even ethnic and the culture, okay, there is, of course, the alternative, then emotion, supposing, and even relationship, we can switch with this, okay, and even set up or the setting, so that's it, okay. Then we have, of course, the Q chart, so what's the Q chart? So uh, the Q chart is a control chart for uh, evaluating the stability of a process in terms of a quality score. So the quality score is the weighted sum of the count of events of various classifications where its classification is assigned a weight. So here, of course, you can see the, the Q chart. Okay, it's actually, uh, it gives here, supposing you can see in the screen, Okay, it gives a framework of creating questions. So start your question with a word from the first column and adverb from the top row. So the combination you choose will drive your questions, your questions. So for the purpose of, of course, research or whatever. So you should avoid creating questions that lie within the factual or analysis box on the key chart. So these types of questions are usually easier to answer and do not and do not require thorough research. Sentences. So take a look with this. So in the Q chart, so for example, in factual, let's have what. Okay. So what is or what was or what um, uh, did probably not. You can have or when was or when. Okay. Did and so on. So if you notice, there is correct answer that's factual. The other one is, of course, uh, prediction. So we use, of course, for example, who will be the next president or when was, or when can, okay, or when could you be here in the Philippines? So that's a supposing it's the question. Okay, for analytical, why? So we have two questions here, no, WH, okay, question. You have why was, okay, or why did you, or supposing uh, why, where, okay, the following are blank, choo -choo, and so on. Next is, of course, how. How was, okay, or how did, or how were. Okay, so that's it. And the last is, of course, sentences and application. So we still have, of course, the two uh, WH question, like uh, why will, okay, or why would, or why could, or how could rather, sorry, Okay, or how can, or how might, and so on. So that's it. Again, we have, of course, four options here, factual, prediction, analytical, and synthesis, and, of course, application. Okay, let's have, of course, the Bloom's taxonomy. So if you can see, this is the Bloom's taxonomy, wherein, of course, uh, um, there is the type of question. We have, of course, the lower order questions and the higher order questions, or probably we have, of course, the lots and the hots. Okay, so the type of question is divided into two. Okay, the first uh, <clears throat> group is, of course, with the lower questions or low, lower order questions. Like, for example, we have knowledge that is identifying or recalling okay, information. We have comprehension, organizing, okay, selecting and understanding facts and ideas, even application, which is applying known okay, facts, rules, and principles to new situations. So, for, for example, of course, we use the following um, verbs in the question, like uh, describe, identify, on, uh, outline, recognize, or state for knowledge. Okay, we have example here. What uh, countries were allies of Britain during, of course, the World Wide II? Okay, so it, of course, talks about this, uh, identify. Then we have, of course, co comprehension. Okay, it's organizing, selecting, and understanding facts and ideas. And we use the following verbs. We have explain, okay, define, and summarize. So for example, what were the main causes of? So you need to explain, okay, or probably um, you can have the list, no? Okay, and for application, so we have, of course, the, the verbs such as compare, contrast, demonstrate. So it's more an application. So for example, how did Hitler demonstrate the qualities of a dictator? 
Okay. So in the the hot rather the higher order questions, okay, we have analysis. It's taking information apart to understand more deeply. Okay, we have also synthesis, bringing different areas together to create new ideas. And of course, evaluation as making judgment or forming and defend, defending opinions. So we have, of course, here some verbs that can be used in, in analysis, like for example, analyze, interpret, inf and infer. Okay, we have also you know, uh, example for analysis, like for example, why did people follow Hitler so readily? Okay, with, of course, the synthesis, we have the following verbs, such as create, predict, design, develop, device, and so. For example, what would happen if Hitler were, were in power today? Okay, saya saya siguro, ano? Okay, when, then we have, of course, evaluation. We have the following words, such as evaluate, defend, judge, assess, validate, and, of course, critic. Okay, so for example, was Canada justified in entering World War II? So that's it. Again, we have, of course, uh, the type of questions with the Bloom's taxonomy. Okay, we have, of course, the lower order questions and, of course, the higher order questions. So in uh, the classification with the lower order questions, we have knowledge, comprehension, application. Where in, in the higher order questions, we have analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Okay, so of course, that's the end of our discussion for today. Okay, I hope you, of course, learned something from our discussions. And before we are going to end, I would like to remind you again to subscribe, okay, like and share. And of course, you can leave a message in our comment box. Okay, this is, of course, Sir A saying good day and God bless everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.